Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, it is great to see you this morning. We're ready to begin our program. My name is Patrick Bannon, president of the Bellevue Downtown Association. Thank you for joining us. I know the weather might have gotten in the way of some people getting here this morning. It was inclement out there, I know. So we're glad you're able to muscle through and, uh, and come out so early in the morning. Um, so we have a very special program today. We have invited the mayor of Bellevue and the deputy mayor to present their State of the City presentation and give us a glimpse into uh, the inner workings and thoughts of where the council is headed this year. We have a lot to celebrate and we also have uh, issues to tackle as well. So we are looking forward to hearing that uh, presentation in just a moment. A couple of announcements I'd like to make. First, I want to welcome elected officials who are joining us this morning. Uh, starting with Washington State Senator Patty Cooter. Patty, thank you for joining us. <laughs> King County Council Member Claudia Balducci. <laughs> Bellevue City Council Member Janice Zahn. <laughs> Bellevue City Council Member Jared Newenhouse. Bellevue City Council Member John Stokes. And then we'll hear from the mayor and deputy mayor in just a moment. Um, one other note, would like to welcome new BDA members. Their logos are up here on the screen and uh, certainly am excited that we've had a great run of uh, new member signups this year. The Bellevue Downtown Association is a volunteer membership organization and uh, we are fueled by members who are eager to be a part of this community and continue to make contributions of not only their, their time and talent, but also their resources to make downtown Bellevue uh, absolutely outstanding. So would, if you could join me in recognizing and thanking these new members, I'll just name them, the four of them, and uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and recognize them. Ergo Sink, Greg Cycle, Hensel Phelps, and Hyde Square Apartments. Please join me in welcoming these new members. So the state of the city, the state of the city is an opportunity for us to, of course, check in on core issues that are driving uh, this community forward. Um, we've seen transformative growth over the past few years. We've had a significant spate of new development. We've welcomed um, you know, thousands of new residents, uh, new businesses to our community. It's also a chance for us to check in on commitments that have been made in the past. Uh, I think it's important for us to hold our elected officials accountable and just three promises that were made last year, or maybe they were made, maybe in an offhanded uh, way. Uh, one is the retractable roof over downtown Bellevue is something that uh, we're expecting sometime soon. I think there's a funding plan in place for that. Uh, the ban on mosquitoes. I don't know if any of you heard about the ban on mosquitoes, but uh, that is in the works. I think the Parks Department is working on that, Patrick, right away. And then finally, the uh, lifetime membership to Amazon Prime, uh, in part, celebrating uh, Amazon's office expansion in downtown Bellevue. But seriously, there, there are a number of issues that we have to celebrate in this community, and uh, everyone here today is very much a part of that story, uh, the narrative of, of Bellevue and uh, of downtown Bellevue's continued transformation and evolution into a vibrant urban center. Our format this morning, we're going to see a video, and then we're going to welcome Mayor Chelmanak for uh, his comments and remarks and presentation, and then we're going to have a moderated uh, Q&A with the mayor and deputy mayor. So it is my privilege to now show you a video, and then we will hear from Mayor Chelmanak.
Now I know why I'm tired this morning. That was, uh, that was a lot of work in 2017 that we did. Um, first of all, I want to uh, actually thank the people who really do all of that work at the city, and that's the uh, incredible uh, Bellevue staff led by Brad Miyake, our city manager. And, you know, as a city council, we couldn't do this without the great work um, of the city staff who make things really happen in this city. So thank you, Brad, and the leadership team and everyone else. So we've switched up the format a little bit this year. I'm going to talk, give you maybe a 50,000 foot flyover, then Lynn's going to join me and Patrick here um, on stage, and we'll go through a nice Q&A uh, about the, the things that are going on in uh, the city. I want to talk first of all about the vision. Um, we've had actually four new city council members who have joined the council, gone through the council since the vision was adopted, and we went back through and we, re uh, we reassessed and we readopted that vision. And I want to speak to it because most people look at it and they look at and they say, well, that's our population that we're talking about. And frankly, we're talking about a whole lot more when we talk about welcoming the world and diversity. We're talking about a diverse economic base, one that really truly works for uh, everyone. We need to have a diversity of housing, all types of housing. Uh, that meet the needs of everyone who uh, lives here in Bellevue and frankly who work here in Bellevue. It's diversity in transportation systems. So it's about a lot of different things when we talk about diversity. And if you look at the entire vision, you will see that it's about choice. That we want the residents and the businesses of Bellevue to always have enough choices so that they can grow exactly the way um, uh, that they want to grow. And speaking of growth, let's go back and take a look at 1976. Do you all remember this? Jerry Ford wanted to whip inflation now. Zorn threw his first pass to Largent. The Bellevue Journal American was renamed to that. Yes, we had a daily newspaper that served Bellevue and the East Side. Three years after this was taken, there was a small startup company in New Mexico that decided to come back up to the Pacific Northwest and relocate in Bellevue. Its name is Microsoft. Deng Xiaoping, 1979, came and visited Boeing. It was a historic event to have a leader from China come to the United States. We didn't know it at that point, but it really was one of the watershed moments of setting us toward a global economy and the role that Bellevue will play in it. Now fast forward 30 years. In the life of a city, not very much. But look how much we changed. This is about the time that I called the tipping point for downtown Bellevue in particular. It truly had become an urban village at that point. Residents were beginning to move in businesses, high rise, and yes, in that time span of 30 years, we lost Microsoft to Redmond, but they came back and they relocated a number of their workers in Bellevue and high tech went high rise. And I think that again is something that is amazing. One year after this picture was taken, another transformative event took place with the passage of Sound Transit 2. And that put us on the road to light rail. It was a really smooth road through the Bellevue City Council. There was no controversy over it. Actually, we uh, lived it, it seemed like, day in and, and day out for a number of years. But you know what? That system today is now under construction. You saw the photograph uh, in the tunnel. Um, and honestly, what is going on now in the city is Bellevue's next great leap forward. So let's move on and see how we're going to be a great city in the future. One of the things that we have always had in this city is great placemaking. And thank you very much to the BDA for the placemaking award for the downtown park. We appreciate that. I'm thinking maybe another award might be coming on this one, but uh, that's just me. Um, great places in Bellevue have always meant great parks. That's why we are a city in a park. And the next great one is the Maidenbauer, uh, the expansion of Maidenbauer Bay Park, and that is underway right now. This is going to be the parks and plazas, uh, trails that we have are the quintessential place on a beautiful Pacific Northwest day like we're gonna have today. 
for people to gather in the city of Bellevue. Maidenbauer Bay Park and its expansion was a vision that was launched more than 30 years ago. It's one of those that people say, you just can't get it done. Well, we're getting it done. It takes a long time. And the lesson is, and I think this is the lesson about Bellevue, think big, think long term, stay with it, and get it done. That's also the story of so many things in Bellevue, including um, our incredible downtown. I'm looking forward to opening the first phases of this park. Uh, Patrick, <laughs> hopefully later this year. If not, uh, we'll get to it in 2019. It's a massive construction. OK, good. You just heard that. He's committed this year. So let's move on to, um, uh, and I think the, the point of Maidenbauer Beach Park is it is that waterfront tie to downtown Bellevue, to our core. It's something that we have always lacked. And I will say, remember 2007? There are a few uh, council members or former council members in the room who will remember the, that time. That's when we first started talking about downtown livability. So it only took 10 years. We had to think about it a little bit, but we got that done. And I want to thank the Bellevue Downtown Association again for the work that they did uh, that you all have done on this um, in making sure that we kept um, what is an incredible place in this city um, really uh, to make it even better. And so it will remain uh, for us the cornerstone of something that I call the Innovation Corridor. That Innovation Corridor runs uh, really along both the Sound Transit line and the line of our freeways. Um, it spans I-90, 405, and 520 and has the light rail uh, within it. The Innovation Corridor goes from the East Main Station downtown across to Wilburton and out through the Bell Red and on to Redmond. It's going to be the place where Bellevue's economy and a world economy will continue to grow well into the future. Um, our um, Citizen Advisory Committee has just finished their work on um, what they see as the vision for the Wilburton area and how that will redevelop. But to do that, we've got to make what we call a grand connection. That is a connection between downtown and Wilburton across 405. Now, we've got that for cars. The grand connection will be this connection that will be for people, for bicycles, even possibly autonomous vehicles that will work as uh, shuttles. It's really an incredible vision that the City Council has put together. And this year, we're in uh, the design guidelines for it. And we're looking at uh, coming up with exactly how we will span 405. So Senator Kuderer is here. We'll be down to see you to talk, uh, to, uh, to talk about that and how we make this happen. Because this will be the place, the place-making uh, area for the city of Bellevue. Bell Red and the Spring District. I had the opportunity to start working on this also back in about 2007. And it was the planning idea. And we didn't know where, we didn't at that point even know whether it would be rep bus rapid transit or light rail rapid transit. But we decided that the Bell Red was going to be a place that we would be ready for transit when it arrived. I'm not sure I knew what transit-oriented development was at that time, but I certainly know what it is now. We have an opportunity at both the 120th and the 130th uh, street uh, stations to have these nodes of growth that will go around those and really serve uh, people well. The beauty of planning is it's hard to predict the future. We made two we made one prediction that was wrong. The first prediction was we were worried that um, it would become commercial, but there'd be no residential. The fact is residential has led the way in the Spring District. The other thing is when you do this, you don't know what the future holds. But the Spring District really made possible Bellevue getting the Global Innovation Exchange. No one had ever thought of it at that time. I don't think anyone would have thought that you would get an advanced degree in the Internet of Things and that you would have two major universities, the University of Washington and Tsinghua University from China, locating in our city. But by setting the table for other people to innovate, 
the city has become a location for what will be um, an effort that will turn out the businesses of the future. And this is going to actually not just affect the 21st century, these will be the businesses of the 22nd century. Now I want to go back and talk a little about history because this is, I think again, one of the strongest po points within the city of Bellevue. If you go back to the, the earlier days before downtown had, had really taken off, we had a great business community. And we had founding families who saw that Bellevue wanted to have everything. It needed to be an autonomous city. So we needed to have a good economy. We needed to have great shopping. We needed to have good quality health care. We needed places where people could live and they could work. And you know, when you look at this list, Paccar, probably the someone from the Eastside Heritage Center will correct me, I'm sure. But Paccar was probably our first global company headquartered here in Bellevue. And they are an innovator. You think I mean the trucks that they put out on the road these days are among the most incredible anywhere in the world. That's an industry that keeps innovating and innovating and innovating. Um, the Bellevue Collection, um, uh, it's, I honestly, Kemper, I don't know how you've done it with um, uh, the number of, of problems with shopping centers around the country and the world. It is an absolutely wonderful gathering place. And I don't know how you can make a food court into, what is it, haute cuisine? But you've managed to do it. Um, I love the South Lincoln uh, food court. It's unbelievable. But all of these businesses um, contributed to the start of Bellevue, and they're a part of our future. And I don't want to forget small business, because I've got a favorite one of mine up there. They've been around on Main Street forever, bounced around a number of different times. But it, again, is that quintessential Bellevue experience, and that's the Bellevue Barber Shop. It's a great place to be on a Saturday morning. Moms and dads taking their kids in to get a haircut. And they've managed to survive through all of the change. But who's investing in Bellevue? Well, the great companies that began here are investing in Bellevue. The great companies like REI that began in Seattle went to Kent. They're coming to Bellevue. Um, and frankly, the world is coming to Bellevue. Look at the list, and this is just a partial list of the companies that have decided that Bellevue is the place that they want to be and that they want to do business. The world is truly uh, uh, deciding to locate here in Bellevue. Now, again, we've got to have things for your employees to do, and this is where a great partnership comes in. It's a great partnership, again, with the BDA, where the BDA puts on these wonderful events and we, the city gets to be a part of it. And so again, thank you for things like uh, Live at Lunch, food trucks, the 4th of July, the Arts Fair, the Jazz Festival. Um, I got the 4th of July down here twice because I really, really like that. Um, <laughs> and, um, and you know, for participating in uh, the holiday celebration through uh, Snowflake Lane. It makes it where people want to be. We also want to make it a place where your workers want to live. In the year 2000, there were 2,400 people living in downtown Bellevue. 2016, when we last got the count, it is over 14,000 people living in downtown Bellevue. Think of this. The average household size in downtown Bellevue advanced from 1.4 persons per unit to 1.7 persons per unit. Doesn't sound like much, but that's a very much a change in the way that people have used multifamily housing. People said it would always be empty nesters. Well, that's not the case because the average age went from 57 years old to 34 years young for a downtown Bellevue resident. We also need to have great neighborhoods in this city. I really think we need to be looking at what, and in particular in our single family neighborhoods, as to what that single family neighborhood of the 21st century really needs to be. Most of our neighborhoods were built in the mid 20th century. We need to look at what people want within those neighborhoods, how we make sure they have that, how we make sure that people have places um, where they want uh, truly to live. Um, 
that actually is, and I didn't pick this, but that's my neighborhood on the right, uh, Viewcrest. That's a neighborhood that is in almost constant change. It was only in the downturn. Um, I've been there for 20 years, and only for a short period in the downturn in about 2010 was there a period when a house was not under reconstruction. So we're seeing that changeover in our neighborhoods, and we're seeing that around the city, but we need to be careful about um, how we manage that. We also need to make sure that Bellevue is a place where you can get, you can be born here, you can get a great education here, you can get your first job here, your first apartment, and your first house. That is, in my mind, one of the great challenges that we face in terms of providing housing that is attainable. Now, I do want to spend just a moment, I talked about GIX before. The educational opportunities that we have in Bellevue, um, again, are mind-boggling. It's another important reason why people locate here and want to be a part of, of Bellevue. Everything from pre-K right up until postgraduate education, um, you get uh, excellence. It's education that inspires the next generation of the creative class. So now the challenges. I touched on one, affordable housing. That's what most people call it. I look at it a little bit differently. I talk about attainable housing. So how do we have a mix of housing that is attainable, a diversity of housing that is attainable for all people um, at all levels? How do you do that? I, I had a CEO tell me the other day that people in their organization who make $30 and $40 an hour cannot afford to live in Bellevue. The crisis of housing and the cost of housing has moved from a social issue to one of core economic competitiveness. Unless we can make sure that there is housing across the board for people, Yes, at the low end, but we need to make sure it's also in the middle end and in the high end. And unless we work together to figure out ways to do that, our economic competitiveness is going to be threatened. And that's something, as since Bellevue has been built on economic competitiveness, we don't want to see happen. Lynn Robinson and uh, uh, former Mayor Stokes, Council Member Stokes, worked on a great task force on affordable housing and have put together a very good plan. That is the reaction of government. We need the private sector and the residents of Bellevue to also get on this and make sure that we can, we can have housing that meets for all people and all budgets. So there's also another challenge that we have. I think you didn't know this one. I'd like to see the debate between which one is the bigger economic challenge. Is it the housing affordability or is it the traffic and congestion? Here's what I know about traffic and congestion. We're spending billions, billions of dollars on it in the Bellevue area and surrounding, whether that's I-90 and 405 and 520. And I, again, I thank the state legislature for everything that they've done on this. We're creating some really new great boulevards in Bellevue, new streets, new connections. The concept of the, the Wilburton Connections pr uh, project, which is this way of combining um, new streets within that innovation corridor so that we can move traffic through, um, is important. And of course, sound transit and mass transit and bus transit are incredibly important. My opinion is you can't buy your way out of traffic congestion when you're in an economy that is booming. And we want to keep a strong economic base. So if you can't buy your way out of it, you've got to get smarter at it. And uh, with that, um, we are in the process of completing the Bellevue Smart Mobility Plan. But we're not new to the table on this. It's actually an update uh, of the 2004 plan that we put together. It's a way of managing traffic better. It's a way of being more predictive. You saw in the video, the slide of the video analytics that we're doing, and again, thank you to Microsoft for being a partner in doing that, of taking a look at how we can make our roads safer. That concept of vision zero, getting to no accidents, also is a matter of helping with congestion. Because anytime you get an accident, 
you get um, a, more con uh, a lot more con uh, congestion. So we're working smarter, and while we had a bill in Olympia that was on autonomous vehicles that we didn't get passed, they did create an autonomous vehicles work group. Bellevue has a group of people in our transportation system that are working on these important intelligent transportation system, and we're going to be at the forefront of that. And finally, back to diversity, the transforming community that we have. Actually, it is a challenge, but I don't see it as that. And again, our vision talks about that. It's an opportunity. Diversity is our strength. When our economy, when what we set out to do works, and that is become a place that welcomes the world, become a place where businesses from all over the world want to locate, it's going to change the way our our city looks at the residential level, the people who live here. I am so proud of the work that our city has done to make this um, a very welcoming city. When I came on the city council 14 years ago, um, if you looked at our boards and commissions, it was pretty much white and middle age. You look at our boards and commissions who do such important work, and it crosses every spectrum of diversity. Welcoming people in in the Bellevue Essentials class has been actually an essential ingredient in, in doing that and getting people who are now living here involved in our city, buying into the city and making our city better. So I'm very, very proud of what we've done on that. So my final message to you is this, partner with us. Partnership has always been a part of what the BDA has been about, what the business community has been about, and what our residents have been about to make this a great city. These can be formal partnerships. They can be informal partnerships. I was struck last month when uh, Vulcan said they put aside a half a percent of their construction project to do art in public places related to their construction projects in South Lake Union. That is an example of a partnership uh, with the community. And there are other ways that we will do that. We'll talk a little about this, I think, uh, as we get into the Q&A section. But I just have to say, I have to say, first of all, thank you to those who were the founders of Bellevue, because you've given me an opportunity to work for the last 14 years on trying to make this a much better place. And thank you to everyone in this room who is going to make Bellevue incredible as we move, believe it or not, into uh, the second quarter of the 21st century. So thank you very much, Patrick and uh, Deputy Mayor Robinson. Why don't we come up and we'll have some discussion. Okay, we are transitioning to the Q&A portion of our program. Again, I'd like to introduce Mayor John Chelmanak and Deputy Mayor Lynn Robinson. We're going to work through a series of questions, and uh, these topics and themes, I, I think, do cut across the board of pertinent issues for us. Our members have helped inform these questions. Uh, we've had a great conversation with our board of directors um, just on topics that I know we want to continue to see addressed. And the first question I'm going to direct to Mayor Chelmanak, and that is related to today's theme. It's Bellevue's Tomorrow. And as you talk about the city's priorities, how would you best represent the council's vision as it relates to Bellevue's Tomorrow? How, how is the council's vision being articulated presently? Well, I think I talked a, a bit about that in, in the remarks. I think in one very large part, it is um, how we are planning for the city's future. Um, taking areas of the city that uh, formerly were, I mean, take a look, look, look at Wilberton. Um, I'm very excited about that planning effort. You're taking what was our auto row, and by the way, we still want to keep auto dealerships. They're great for sales tax, so we're finding places for the auto dealerships. Um, they're also great places to go and kick tires and drive cars you can't afford. Um, the uh, um, so I think, I, I think that a lot of it is that planning for the future on sort of the commercial and economic side, and yet looking at our neighborhoods and making sure 
uh, that they're vibrant and that we're getting for our residents who live, no matter whether the neighborhood is downtown Bellevue um, or whether it's up in Bridal Trails, making sure that they have what they need um, for a high quality of life. Deputy Mayor, the mayor touched on the affordable housing strategy and it being really one of our core challenges in Bellevue. In consideration of the strategy, it's one thing to set up a strategy and have a plan. It's another to carry through and work through partnership with the community to implement it. How will Bellevue take steps, concrete steps, uh, to bring new housing options to the marketplace? Um, so we talked about affordable housing before. We talked about traffic congestion. I'm going to suggest that the lack of affordable housing has a lot to do with our traffic congestion. But Bellevue definitely has an affordable housing need. 30% of our households are what we consider cost burden, which means they're spending more than 30% of their annual income on their housing expenses. So the city of Bellevue, uh, with uh, leadership of former mayor John Stokes, worked with a team of housing experts who range from uh, high-end residential real estate agents to um, low-income housing experts and everything in between. And for an entire year, they worked together and came up with a two-part affordable housing strategy that is tailor-made for the needs of the city of Bellevue. The first part is a group of incentives. So how do, you, how do you incentivize a developer to put in affordable housing along with their market rate housing? And this type of incentives, they can look like a multifamily property tax exemption or it can be a density bonus, but that generally will give you affordabilities for people that can um, pay 80% of the area median income. And that, I think that the Bellevue's uh, median income is 64,000 uh, a year, and that or 68,000, and that would bring it down to $54,000 a year for people who are in that. They could afford to live in 80%. So that's the um, incentives. But the second part is creating a budget, and this budget uh, would allow us to create and retain affordable housing at deeper affordabilities. And I think that if we were to double the amount of money that we already put into our affordable housing budget, we would be able to achieve our goals, especially if we work with our partners in the community. You know, they say that um, any commute longer than 20 minutes decreases your quality of life. Right now, we have how many? Um, like 350,000 people, employees commuting in and out of Bellevue every single day. If we could create more affordable housing and um, in addition to the planned transit oriented development that we have coming into Bellevue, that's gonna give a lot more employees the opportunity to live where they work. And that's not only good for employees, that's good for business. Speaking on that topic of what's good for business, obviously our members as a business association are highly concerned about the economic climate, not just today, but tomorrow as well. We're fortunate to be uh, headquarters home for many great companies, uh, including you know T-Mobile and PACCAR and SAP Concur, Symmetra, and soon to be REI. Um, others are making significant investments, including Amazon, OfferUp, Salesforce, Tencent, Samsung, and others from around the world. So as we look at the opportunities in front of us, what can the council do most tangibly in the near term to offer up an attractive business climate for employees and employees who want to live here? Free Amazon Prime for life. Um, <laughs> no. Um, I. You know, I hope that we are doing it. Um, the first is an economic climate, um, I think, that, that allows for development to occur, and then an economic climate that allows for that development to be full uh, of workers. Um, I know that um, actually right now, in terms of downtown livability, um, uh, we've had a group that has uh, been meeting with our planning staff and our permitting staff, I should say, um, to make sure that people understand the changes that were in the code um, so that we, that when someone is ready to develop and they come in for their pre-application, there really aren't a lot of surprises. 
Um, so, uh, because saying, well, the code has changed and you've got to do X, so go back to the drawing board and, and start again. So I think that is one way um, that we can work uh, to make sure that uh, the economic climate is good. Um, we, um, we actually are, when you look at the, when you look at cities, we're actually sort of in that lower to middle in terms of the taxes that we have. Um, I think people do get a very good return on their uh, tax benefit here. Um, but again, I just kind of see this uh, as we move into the future, you certainly can't rely solely on taxing everything. Um, I don't think that works. Um, some cities do, I'm not going to say which. Um, um, but um, uh, it, it, you know, that, we, that, but there is um, only a certain amount that you can sustain. And so I think that, again, these kind of partnerships with business, I, I look at our capital investment program and probably the largest investment in our capital investment program every year is maintenance of what we've already built. So we keep it at a very high level, but every time we build something, there's more maintenance and that goes up. So it's a balance between keeping that high quality of maintenance of facilities, roads in particular, um, and, um, you know, and continuing at a, at a level at which you can continue to grow. So, so of course, common um, knowledge that pol all politics are local. But we know that the economy also extends, the economic climate connects to federal and state issues too. And if I heard you correctly, I think you mentioned that the federal and state government were willing to pay for the entire Grand Connection uh, through, through a commitment that's, that's, that's no, I'm joking, of course. Yeah. And, so and by, the in, way, by the way, the roof is open today over Belgium. It, it is, yeah. it is, for the foreseeable future. So we, we made good on that promise too. So in addition to the Grand Connection, what are some other key issues that are um, really front and center for you when you think of state and federal partnerships and, and, and how you can bridge the gap with, uh, with government leadership and, and really tend to needs here in Bellevue? I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> um, you know, actually we did very well in the last budget with the capital budget. We had a report on that. Um, there are some things that are, I, some people might consider them amenities, some people might consider them uh, base things, but uh, we moved up funding for completion of one of the missing links on the Mountains to Sound Greenway Trail um, in the Eastgate Factoria area. Um, that, that was spectacular. We did get some more money from the state for um, Maidenbauer uh, Bay Beach Park. But at your tables today is something that I think is important, and it's a way that we have taken to um, talking with our legislators, both federal and state level. It's this uh, flyer called Invest in Bellevue. Um, oftentimes, uh, when you go and you talk to folks at the state or you talk to people at, at the federal government, they'll say, Bellevue's rich. You've got it all. You can just pay for it yourself, right? Well, A, that's not completely true. Um, we are in a good shape because we've been good financial stewards. But this is what we show, show them. If you put federal and state money into the city of Bellevue, you will see a return on your investment, state and federal government, because you will see greater tax revenue coming back to you. More than 700 million in tax revenue to the state, uh, to the state of Washington from Bellevue residents and businesses in uh, 2017. You look at what you get in terms of education and the type of companies that, that we have here. Bellevue College is, depending on how you do this, um, it's like the third largest institute of higher education in the state of Washington. Um, it is an amazing story in terms of training the workforce of tomorrow. So, Lynn, I'll let you talk too about, because uh, I've answered two questions in a row, and you can wrestle a microphone away from me. <laughs> well, I was just going to say a really good example of the government partnership with some of the projects is the Artifia loan that we got for the uh, Bell Red area for the Spring District. For all the infrastructure, we were able to borrow, I think it was $100 million 
from the federal government at very low interest, and we have we don't have to pay it back until what 2024. And the the purpose of this loan is that if you invest in your community and in your infrastructure, you're going to be bringing back more revenues, and so you'll be able to pay that loan back when the project is done. So that enabled us to do all those infrastructure projects in advance of development, which is just an amazing opportunity for our city. The city, every two years or almost every year, does a survey to get comments, feedback to the community at large, to the council to help with prioritization. And I think by and large, the last two survey cycles, we've seen similar results in that one of the number one challenges that we face as a community is growth and issues related to growth. And then one of the greatest opportunities and benefits of being in Bellevue is growth and issues related to growth. And so in addition to transportation investments, the downtown livability initiative, affordable housing strategy, how, how are you best responding to both opportunities and challenges related to growth and how can we best, you know, partner in helping navigate this transformation that we continue to undergo? Deputy Mayor Robinson, you want to take a shot on that? Thank you. Well, I think you're always going to have a trade-off with growth between increased opportunity and trying to maintain affordability. And I think the BDA is going to have to work with the city to make sure that those very businesses that make Bellevue such a special place to be are not priced out of our growing economy. Um, for a city that has grown a lot, the good news is we still have room to grow. The downtown is only 60% built out. We're just starting development in the Bell Red. We still have Wilburton, Eastgate, and Factoria to develop. So I think that planning for the growth, distributing the growth through these growth areas, and providing opportunities for multimodal transportation so we can connect all these areas, and maintaining a variety of affordability is gonna be key to our, su our success. And I also think that maintaining our public safety is very important, so we have to continue investments in that. Thank you. So as we look at growth and challenges, we have regional challenges and connections that uh, need to be addressed. Uh, Mayor Chelmanak, how is the city doing on regional connection and collaborations? Is it, are things, in our climate, political climate, moving moving forward in a positive direction, negative direction, where are some opportunities uh, that Bellevue has related to regional collaboration in our economy? Actually, I think we're doing much better in the region uh, than we have been for a while. Um, uh, I know Bellevue is respected within the region. Um, we do stake out our positions. Um, that's important to do. Um, I think one thing that, that we're doing um, uh, I think um, Mayor Stokes, when he, was, when he was mayor, he had us actually sit down and talk about how we act within the region. And I think that that helped us, uh, again, to be seen within the region um, in a much better light. Uh, sometimes we were seen as uh, sometimes as combative, sometimes uh, not cooperative. I don't know that we were always, that was always earned but sometimes uh, the way you're perceived is, is, is as important as whether or not it's a uh, fact. And then um, this year, both, uh, the, well, actually all seven members of the council got together at our retreat and we talked a lot about the way we do business. It was what I call seven strong. How do you work in a seven member body where you're all separately elected officials you have a mayor who is selected, a mayor and deputy mayor who are selected among, your, among yourselves. You have a city manager who has the responsibility to, to run the government. And how can we better work? And I think the idea of, uh, and I think it's, it's worked well here. Uh, we, we grew into it in the region. We're growing into it locally on the, uh, on the city council. And I've told people at the, at the um, that I may be, um, called the Aretha Franklin um, of Bellevue because the one word that I use is respect. Show respect for each other, show respect for the people um, who come down and visit you at City Hall and talk to you about the issues that are important to them. If you show them that respect, um, I think that they will honor that. 
we've had a contentious time um, over the last um, year and a half, maybe two years, over the issue of a homeless shelter. Um, there was a meeting not that long ago I, uh, that I call the red, the red and purple meeting. You had the people who were supporters on one side dressed in red, the people on the other side dressed uh, in purple. Um, last night we had a discussion about how we're going to do the land use code. I didn't see a lot of red and purple in the audience. People who were supporters of a shelter, people who have questions about a shelter, they were all sitting together. It was a transformation uh, of the way um, uh, people are looking at the issue. So I think that being honest and being respectful is the first step in doing that. And um, I think if we do that and go on in the future doing that, um, we'll be a body that is, um, that is effective on local issues as well as effective on regional issues. Thank you. We have a couple more questions. I'm going to save one for the budget for the end. But as we look at specifics, uh, so council members, this is a part-time position that you're in. I know it transforms itself into a full-time job uh, in, in many cases. As you, look at, as you look at your checklist of things that you want to get done in the next one to two years, and I'm looking at you, Deputy Mayor Robinson, what two things are you most interested and excited to accomplish over the next two years in your uh, time on council? Well, first let me say that I think we have a very strong and thoughtful council right now. We have people that represent the tech industry, uh, engineering, business, legal, and healthcare, all working together to make good decisions for the city. We have an excellent city manager and staff, and I'm really confident that we're going to be able to achieve the goals that we've set out for us. Uh, the things that I think that are really important that we're going to be working on, this is just my opinion because I come from the health services and human services um, side of life, is doing that land use code amendment so that we can site a homeless shelter in Bellevue and implementing, fully implementing our affordable housing strategy. And the last thing is just, as I said before, guiding our growth to ensure that our transportation, economic, and livability standards continue to be met. But I'm gonna let the mayor say what maybe he thinks his top priorities are. You left me out of the professions there. You, d you didn't have garbage man. <laughs> and business. <laughs> business is also represented. <sighs> That's, that's okay. Uh, just as an aside, Patrick lives in Kirkland, and the company that I work for, I'm not going to do any plugs, but we serve uh, their homes. So um, I'm going to get him a uh, uh, bumper sticker that says, Bellevue's mayor is my garbage man. Um, <laughs> and my board chair works for Republic Services. Exactly. So. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We're, we're taking over. Um, so the, the question is, what do you want to accomplish? Um, I think, right? Two things, two things. Um, I think, for, and for me, this is, um, I think many of you know, I've, this, um, this is going to be, these are my last two years uh, on city council. Um, 16 years will be enough. Um, and uh, I am really very excited about that connection the, uh, the grand connection, which I see is that um, backbone of livability within the downtown area and how it connects. So I'm really excited about getting the, um, the, uh, the downtown livability, getting that implemented as growth goes forward. Um, the planning process uh, in the Wilburton area uh, is very important. And then, um, you know, um, at the core for me has been the parks. And so making sure that um, we're going to make good on our commitment from the parks levies, um, that has had to slow down a little bit now because we're collecting that money to do um, Airfield Park. I, is that what we finally ended up on the name for it, Airfield Park? Yeah. We're collecting that money that will allow us to do that, um, again, sort of out in the, uh, the Eastgate area. Um, and so, the, yeah, that, that would be two things. And coming up after 16 years of leaving it a better place than it was when you came. Thank you. 
Okay, so much like the weather today, the fiscal outlook for the city of Bellevue has been somewhat fair and rosy and beautiful. However, as we look out to the horizon, we see that there is very strong potential that expenditures will start to outpace revenues in the 2021 timeframe. So the council's working through a budgeting process right now and will continue to engage the community, including the BDA on, on budgeting priorities and how to address the, the out years. But what options, and uh, I think you alluded that a soda tax isn't on the table, but <laughs> what options is the city council considering in terms of, or at least strategies to address this potential shortfall in the out years? Well, I'm gonna retire, so. <laughs> Lynn, your Jared, problem. Janice, would you like to come on up and uh, talk this, Lynn? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, uh, it actually, this, these are the these are the things that keep us up at night, um, especially about uh, the the concepts behind fiscal responsibility and what Patrick is talking about. We're adding because of growth. We're we're adding a new fire station, Fire Station Ten. It'll be located up at the corner of 112th and uh, 12th. Um, uh, up in, in that area. Well, it takes about 13 to 14 positions to fully staff um, a fire station. And when you do that and fully staff it, um, in about that, and that's about the time frame that it comes online, what happens to your general fund budget if you're just having normal growth in it is while we're above our 15% level that we want to have for reserves, which keeps our bonding capacity in really great shape and keeps our, you know, when we have to bond, we get it at a very good rate. We take that and it all of a sudden begins to curve down. And by about 2022 or so, um, it is um, well below that 15% level and would uh, continue down. Now that's not even to consider, we, we consider normal growth in that, but it's not even considering things like we're probably gonna have to add um, some people in uh, public safety, in fire, um, our, our pub, uh, in uh, police, and some other areas. So the options, the, the first thing I would say is if we're gonna go tax revenue-wise, um, one option is to continually take the automatic 1% uh, property tax increase. Um, I will say this time we were not responsible for the property tax increase that um, you got this year. That comes really mostly from some sound transit taxes taking effect and the legislative reaction to the McCleary decision. That's, that's what um, uh, uh, drove those taxes up and I understand the legislature is looking at or has begun to make a fix on that for next year, which is good. Um, our, uh, our other taxes are generally speaking at a relatively low level. Um, but I think we just, I think the first thing we've got to do is sort of relook at where we put our money. So you just, you have to look internally where you put your money, what your priorities are, um, what, you know, certain streams of money go to certain things. And again, I think when it comes to affordable housing, we have to look at, as we make transportation a very high priority in the budget, we make our parks and, and general, but, uh, general um, uh, government buildings a high priority. I think we've got to look at that and say, you know what, there's a certain amount of money in the CIP that needs to go to affordable housing, and there's a certain amount in the general fund that needs to go toward things that keep people out of falling out of housing and into homelessness. But it's your problem to solve, Deputy Mayor. <laughs> and collectively, we'll have some feedback on those solutions. Yeah, and no, I, 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 I understand that uh, perfectly, and I look forward to it. I'm actually really happy that the BDA and the Bellevue Chamber have decided to put together a group to work with us and to follow us on our budget process. And we really look forward to that. As I say, it's a partnership. We can't do it, uh, we can't do it without you. Um, you need to tell us when we're doing wrong and you need to support us when we're doing right. Mayor Chelmanak, Deputy Mayor Robinson, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for your commitment to making the city an absolutely fantastic place to be, for your commitment to partnering with the community. Would you please join me in thanking the mayor and deputy mayor.
That is our program. I would like to say thank you uh, in a couple directions. One is to our breakfast series sponsors, Kaiser Permanente, Heritage Bank, and Fortin Group. Please join me in thanking them. And if you haven't noticed, there is a Bellevue Jazz and Blues Festival coming up. Uh, the posters, including the Black Cat, are behind me. Uh, that is going to be taking place May 30 through June 3rd. This is a, another great partnership between the Bellevue Downtown Association, the City of Bellevue, Microsoft, Washington Federal, Four Culture, a number of other organizations to bring outstanding talent, both ticketed and many free shows to the City of Bellevue. So again, thank you for your participation. Thank you for your membership in the organization, and we look forward to working with you going forward. We'll see you next month.